Okay, welcome back to our Canva for SVG creation series. This is week three, so if you missed weeks one and two, definitely go back and watch those. I made the cover title things all look the same so you can know what you're looking for. But this is the third week, and in the past two weeks, we've been diving into all the editing features of Canva, talking about how to use it to create SVGs, and all the different elements, features, and tools you can use within it to really make your SVGs pop and look professional. This week, we're gonna be taking that SVG that we made last week, or rather two weeks ago, and putting it into Inkscape to clean it up so it's ready for Cricut Design Space and or ready to sell if you wanna sell your SVGs on Etsy. Before we jump into it, if you have any questions about Canva, Inkscape, SVGs, selling on Etsy, any and all of the things, please feel free to drop a comment below. I love responding to them. You can also find me over on TikTok or Instagram at it's Laura Lambert, and you can ask me questions there as well. I'm always posting tutorial videos and I'm happy to help. Okay, but without wasting too much more time, let's go ahead and dive right into exporting our file from Canva and putting it into Inkscape. We talked about how to export this so it's ready to go right into Inkscape, but we're just gonna go ahead and cover that again really fast so that we make sure we're all ready to go. So you're gonna click share up here in the upper right hand corner, download, and then you wanna choose this file type drop down menu and select SVG and make sure to select transparent background because we don't want this white canvas layer to come along with it. We just want the SVG and then we're gonna click download. Once it's downloaded, you can just drag and drop it over to your desktop or save it wherever you want. And then we are gonna actually open up Inkscape. It looks like this. It's like a little mountain range with a little ink puddle on it. And then we are going to import our design. So let's go ahead and do that. So here in Inkscape, we're gonna go ahead and pull our design in and we can actually just drag it over from our desktop if that's where you saved it. If you would rather not do it that way, you can also click this button right here, which is your import button. And that will open up all of your files as an option for you to select it and bring it here onto your canvas. For this screen, we're gonna select this first option, which is to include the SVG as an editable object. And that's gonna keep all of our layers together just like how we created it in Canva. Once it comes in, we're gonna hold down Control on our keyboard and use this bottom right to resize our design. That's gonna keep um, it from being stretched in any direction and keep the width and height ratio the same as we resize it. If we don't hold that button down, you can see we can just stretch in any direction and we definitely don't want to do that. So once we have our design kind of centered on our canvas and sized correctly, we're ready to start looking over the layers panel here and making sure that we um, have it kind of cleaned up exactly how we want it to put in Cricut Design Space. So all I did just then was I clicked this little layers panel tab, which is going to toggle our layers view. Yours probably already has it there. And then I'm also going to um, kind of open it up a little bit so that we can see all the different layers here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click ungroup just by right clicking it and clicking ungroup. And now we have all of our little individual pieces as SVG layers. Size this to make it a little bit bigger so you can really see what we're doing here. And you'll notice that we only see one layer, which can happen sometimes when you import an SVG. So we wanna see our objects panel because I'm willing to bet that all of these little individual pieces are actually objects and not layers. So we're actually gonna convert them to layers. You might see the objects panel right here. And if you do, you can just click it and it'll open it up. If you don't see it there, you can go up to the top under the object submenu and just click on this objects dot 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 and it'll pop up. So now that that is popped up, we're gonna collapse our layers panel by clicking on this button so we can really see all of our objects here. And you'll notice the one downfall when we export things from Canva is that there's a lot of extra groups that we don't need. So you can see when I highlight this object group right here, it's just the G, which should just be one element, but instead it has it subcategorized <laughs> into four different subgroups. So the way we get rid of that is just by highlighting it and clicking ungroup. And you're just gonna continue to click ungroup until you get down to just the path layer. So you can also do that by selecting all of them at once and clicking ungroup. And it's gonna continue to ungroup, ungroup, ungroup until we get down to that path layer like we talked about before. But just so you know, you can do this all at once until you get down to just the lowest level path. 
Um, there will still be a few sometimes left over, so I like to just go in and kind of grab those ones individually that get left behind, as I say. So we're gonna do those. We're gonna get rid of all these extra groups here until all we see are paths, because those are just like the outlines of each of these individual elements and everything is separated out. So now that we've gotten everything down to its most basic and it's all under this parent group of layer one, we're actually gonna click ungroup on layer one and um, in a second, we're gonna kind of move everything out of layer one into its own layers, but we'll get to that in a second. So what we now wanna do is group things by like color and get rid of extraneous little cuts that we don't want. So like this little dot, for instance, it's up to you, but if, it, if I was cutting this, I don't really wanna deal with like these tiny little dots. So I'm just gonna click on them and click delete because I really wouldn't want my Cricut to cut that out. They're too tiny and they would just be really annoying. And I'm gonna do that with a couple of these ones too, just to make this design a little simpler, a little easier to manage, um, just to make it a little easier to manage. And the same thing down here. So it looks like we've got, apparently my mouse is connecting and unconnecting. It looks like um, our green is all one layer. That's great. And then we've got our yellows as a layer. Our pinks are a layer. Okay, so this is actually pretty clean. This is cleaner than I thought it was gonna be. Sometimes it comes in with lots of little extra cuts, but it actually doesn't seem like it did. We'll double check that again in a minute, but that actually looks pretty good. And this is looking good as well. The only thing I'm gonna do is I am going to highlight this whole section here. Hello. We're having trouble grabbing spring apparently. I'm just gonna move it down a couple notches so that it looks a little better. Okay, so we've gotten rid of some things we don't want to be a part of this design. Now we're gonna regroup because this, for instance, this hello, this should very simply just be one group. It doesn't need to be four different paths. So I'm gonna locate where this starts in my menu of objects over here. It looks like four, five, nine is the O and then 427 is the H, which means everything in between, just double checking that it's highlighting, is hello, perfect. So I'm going to shift click to select that whole thing. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna select group. And then I'm going to right click again and rename this group hello. Sometimes it's very finicky and it doesn't wanna do it. You can also double click and rename, um, just so I can remember what those paths are. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with spring, except instead of doing it all together, I'm gonna to do just by color. So I want the S and the I, which is 491 and 467. So I'm gonna command click and I'm gonna group those and I'm going to rename it yellow spring, just so I can remember what that is. And then we're gonna probably want, yes, this one and this one. And I'm gonna re, I'm gonna group those and I'm gonna rename it Teal Spring. And then I'm gonna grab this one and this one, and I'm going to group them. And then I'm gonna rename it Blue Spring. So now you can see we're kind of starting to get some groups that make sense. Now I'm gonna look at what all these paths are down here, because those would all be separate cuts. We don't want that. Sometimes if you can't tell what you're looking at, like right here, I really can't tell what the difference is between these two just by highlighting them. So I'm just going to uh, toggle the, oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm just toggling the eyeball, which turns off the visibility so I can kind of see what it is I'm looking at. And it actually looks like, that is so silly, the way this is created, let's just move it out of the way so you can see, is that each uh, layer is a separate, uh, we have like a duplicate right here. So that's really interesting. Uh, let's talk about how you can clean that up. First, let's look at what all these layers are and then maybe take out some that we don't need. For instance, it's hard to see right here, but I can tell there's a white layer. There it is. There is a white layer here. If I start hovering it over the blue, you can kind of see it a little better. And it's just adding kind of that extra detail in. I've already, I can already tell, I don't really want that or need it. It's not adding enough to this uh, part of the element to make it worth cutting out on my Cricut. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And then this right here is gonna kind of serve as my backing layer, which is gonna help me layer this when I actually put it on a design. So same thing with this one. This is not adding enough extra for me to justify having to cut this twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. 
And now we're gonna relayer this back together and see how it looks without the pieces that I deleted before. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is turning that backing layer white so that it looks a little bit better. So let's go ahead and line this up correctly. And then I'm gonna turn the backing layer white so we can kind of check this out and see if we like how it looks with a white flower. And I can do that by selecting that layer and then selecting white from the color panel right here. And I can already tell that I'm gonna like this just fine. It totally is worth uh, getting rid of that other white layer before. I'm gonna make my um, background, I'm actually gonna just put in like a black square here so I can see it up against it. I'm just gonna draw it right here. And then I'm gonna select it and make it like a navy blue actually. And then I can take that rectangle and drag it down to the bottom layer down here. So it's behind everything. And again, this is just for me to see what this is gonna look like. Great, that looks perfect. And we really don't need to do any grouping here because every color was already on its own separate layer. So once again, I just have this rectangle here temporarily so I can see if I like the white flowers. And um, I do, but I'm actually, gonna make them a little bit darker, um, not a perfect white. I'm probably gonna make them like a pale pink here. That's better. That way, if I wanted to put this on a white t-shirt or something, I could. Okay, so we've created that section. We've grouped our hello, we've grouped our spring, we've cleaned this up. Let's do some grouping up here. So earlier we were selecting from our layers panel over here to the right, but now we're actually gonna do it by command or by shift clicking on those layers actually i take it back we're not going to do it like that um, because it's harder for you to see what's going on i could right click this and group it and rename it from here but it's just harder to see what's happening if we do it that way well I, i'll do it i'll do it to show you so when we group it it kind of creates its own thing here and then we can still rename it so blue um we'll call this drops and now we're going to go in and grab these kind of aqua ones we're going to group them as well it's going to create the group right here double click aqua dots or drops whatever we called them before then we're going to do the same with the yellows moving right along there they are highlighted we can group them we can call them yellow drops and then let's go grab the pink ones right click there they are pink drops and now um, I'm just gonna name these remaining paths that we haven't named yet, just so everything has a name. These are from our vase that we were playing with earlier. Once again, I can use the eye so I can see what color I've got highlighted. This is the light pink. This is the hot pink. This is the vase. We'll call it, yeah, the vase. And then this is our, um, what do you call that, mint. Also, we could call the light pink our backing layer, just as a reminder that it kind of covers the whole thing and it will be our first one that we cut. Okay, so now everything has a name and there's really only one more step to clean this up, which would make it perfect for if you wanted to sell it and it would make it really clear to people what um, you're doing. And what I would do uh, is I would take each separate element and change it into its own layer. Right now you can see everything here is nested under um, this kind of parent layer that's called hello. And we wanna actually move these out to their own layers so that they can be separate. So for instance, spring really should be its own layer. It shouldn't be nested under everything else. So I might select all three and I would put um, add layer and we're gonna call it spring and we're gonna move it above the current layer. And then we can actually take these guys and drag them into that layer. And now they're nested underneath it. So hello should really just be hello. It shouldn't also be uh, all these flowers and things. So we're gonna make a new layer. We're gonna right click, add layer, and we're gonna call it flower and vase. We're gonna move it above the current layer. So it's up there. And then we're gonna take all of our little pieces that go with that and we're going to drag and drop them inside it. And then I'm gonna close it up. Yes, it looks a little odd right now because it moved the light pink base as the top, but I can just drag it right back down underneath. Whoops, that didn't work. There we go. Now it looks right. Nest it back up. And then we want our little drop flourishes to be their own layer. So I'm going to add a new layer. They're going to be called the drops. They'll be above the current layer once again. 
And I'm gonna select all of these. We're gonna go nest it inside, close it up. And then I'm actually just gonna click ungroup here because we, uh, we really don't need uh, this to be nested inside of it. So let me get rid of that, stack it down. I might make a mistake here. <laughs> yep, I can't remember how to do that, hold on. There is a better way to do this, but I honestly just can't for the life of me remember what it is. So we're gonna move it outside of this layer by just um, dragging it and putting it on its own plane here. And then we're just gonna delete this kind of extra one. And now we have everything all cleaned up. We have spring as a layer. We have the flower and vase as a layer, the drops and hello. And within it are all of our sub layers that we grouped earlier. So now this is super clean, super ready to go. And we can just click file, save as, and I'm gonna call this hello spring. And then we're gonna save it to our desktop and we're going to save it as an Inkscape SVG, hit save. And then I'm gonna open up Cricut Design Space and we're gonna import it so I can show you what this actually looks like. I'm gonna click new project and then I'm gonna click upload, upload image. We're gonna browse and we're gonna grab it because we just made it. Where did it go? <laughs> it's called Hello Spring, there it is, past it. And it should come in nice and pretty, yay. We're gonna click upload. Sometimes the uh, little thumbnail, it doesn't look perfect, but once you add it to your canvas, it should be exactly how you made it in Inkscape. And there it is. So now you can see all of our groups have been maintained just like we made them in Inkscape. We've got, it, the whole file is called Hello Spring, so it usually will rename your groups from before, but ultimately that doesn't matter because you have all of your little subgroups just like you made them all perfectly um, paired together exactly how you wanted them. And then you can work with it here in Cricut Design Space just like you normally would. Like Hello is uh, its own group here, but if I wanted to weld these together to avoid having those cuts be separate, I could do that. And really the goal here is that if you decided to sell this SVG online or if you decided to give it to someone, they would be able to immediately work with it and know exactly what they're doing and where you have everything organized. And that is the beauty of Inkscape. So that's it. Okay, so that's it. If you've never used Inkscape before, I hope it wasn't too scary of a process. I know when I first opened that application, I thought it was gonna be really hard to use. And then I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't. And it doesn't take that much time to learn, especially if all you're doing is using it to clean up SVGs. Now, keep in mind that some people do use Inkscape to make SVGs from scratch, and you can definitely do that. Later, I might create my own series on YouTube on how to do it, but you can find plenty of other videos on here teaching you how to use it for a whole SVG creation. That's just not typically what I use it for. I just use it for cleanup, grouping, and like what we did today. So I hope that it was easy. I hope it was helpful. Definitely drop questions and comments below um, with your feedback and what you want to learn next. And then we are on to the next series. Next week, we're going to be jumping into sublimation. So last week, we kind of started that because I showed you how I converted my Epson printer to a sublimation printer. Next week, we're going to be talking about all things sublimation and how to get started with sublimation if you've never done it before. So until then, happy crafting. Happy crafting.